Good day, everybody, um, and welcome to our annual review, I've called it, because it was just over a year ago that I was sitting in Bloberg. My daughter was filming me on the phone, and uh, we were trying to make sense of what was happening in the markets at the time. What, um, what I do remember is we didn't get the filming right, but we managed to get the audio out in any case. And at the time, actually, we were re reasonably pleased with our performance that we managed to generate um, in a very tricky and a very uncertain time. So if we have a look at the performance of the various asset classes, and this is to May 2020, we could see that um, South African property um, had done appallingly down nearly 46 percent. South African equities were down six percent. Uh, bonds and cash were positive, but the real place to have been um, up until May 2020 last year was offshore, where offshore bonds, equities and cash um, had done extremely well. And if you go back and reflect on that recording, you will remember that at the time, um, we were saying that uh, we were very happy to have our insurance in dollar cash and that it helped our performance during that period because the rand had depreciated substantially against the dollar and as always happens in a crisis the dollar appreciates against all other currencies but that the significant sell-off um, was presenting opportunities to us to buy assets at um, at very low prices so I remember saying that we were very, very keen on the bond market and we had done a lot of buying and we'd taken ourselves from a, an underweight position in bonds to a substantially overweight position buying um, South African government bonds on 12% plus yields. Um, we'd added to the offshore equity component during the significant sell-off in offshore equities. And we had not added to South African equities, which with the benefit of hindsight was a mistake. The reason that was a mistake is because we and nobody else uh, understood that the amount of money that was being pumped into the system around the world would um, filter its way through into the commodity markets. Uh, Joe Biden elected as president, an infrastructure program and commodity prices have gone wild since October last year. Copper, iron ore, all the products that we produce and of course um, with it Anglo-American billets and Glencore, Kumba, etc, etc, have driven our market much higher, also improved our fiscal position and so therefore the bond market has improved. Um, and so in all South Africa is feeling like a much uh, happier place in June 2021 than it was a year ago. Uh, if we have a look at our performance up until May 2020, the conservative managed fund which had the lowest exposure to equity was up nearly six percent the managed fund was up 3.2 percent which was below inflation but our prudent fund at the time was down two percent and that reflected the performance of the underlying managers in which the prudent fund invests so if we have a look at those we'll see that there was a vast difference in performance from the various fund managers 91 had produced a phenomenal return of 11.5% positive, um, whereas Coronation, Allen Gray, Prudential, slightly positive or slightly negative, and Aylet minus 8% in that period to May 20, in the, in the one year to May 2020. So a vastly, vastly different uh, level of performance. Um, what we try to do um, at this time is have a look at the underlying fund managers and understand why they've done well or badly. So with 91, they had over 35% offshore in the in the good performing stocks. Um, Alan Gray was suffering because Orbis was suffering because value was suffering. Prudential was suffering because property was suffering and they had a very big position in, in that. And Aylet was suffering because they um, are uh, far more heavily exposed to small cap shares and small cap shares in a crisis always get hammered by the market. So we didn't make any changes to this fund. We actually kept it as it is. Um, and we've benefited as a result of that. 
If we now have a look at the performances for the asset classes for the year to May 2021, what you will see is that cash hasn't done particularly well, up 3.6%, so below inflation for the first time in many years. Bonds have recovered very nicely, they're up 11%, so our um, aggressive positioning in bonds was, was good. Property has recovered, it's up 37%, and I'll dwell on that for a moment because um, we have a model that um, we've had a look at over many years, which has a look at the various combinations of asset classes um, that are likely to produce inflation plus returns over certain periods. Um, and property made up 10% of that exposure within the managed fund, and we found ourselves with less than 2% exposure in property. So I had to have a deep look at the property sector at the time. And although the um, headline news was dreadful, uh, Fushini at the time was saying they weren't going to be paying rent at some of the malls that they were operating in because they had to have their stores closed. But what I did was I also had a look at the net asset values. And obviously in property, there's a replacement cost to, to rebuilding that particular property. And the the, these shares were trading at a 50% discount to replacement cost. So we increased that exposure from less than 2% to somewhere around 6%. Not quite to the full, full weight up to the 10%. I wish I had, but the model was, um, was, was very helpful. So on the equity front, um, it was a mistake not to have added to South African equities, as you can see, but I think I've explained, I didn't expect the commodity markets to do as well as they did from October of last year. Um, and as you can see now, offshore assets have performed very poorly because the RAND has strengthened on the back of higher commodity prices, but we've retained our, our offshore weighting and in fact have increased the offshore weighting during the last few months as the RAND has strengthened um, very sharply against the dollar because that is our insurance policy when things go long, go wrong, and we like to have a conservatively positioned portfolio for our retired investors. So having a look at the contrast in the performance between May 2020 and 21 for our funds, uh, we can see that the Personal Trust Prudent Fund uh, in May to May 2021, having been down a year ago, is now up 24%. The managed fund is up 18%. And the conservative managed fund, our most conservative fund, is up just nearly 12%. All nicely ahead of inflation. And, and have all benefited from the significant rally that we've seen in both property, local property and local equity. So if we have a look at the underlying performances that delivered for the Prudent Fund, um, we will see that in contrast to last year, 91 has had a relatively poor year, only up 9%, whereas Allen Gray, Prudential and Coronation are all up uh, somewhere in the mid 20s. And Aylet, having done the worst during the period last year, is up 45% for the 12 months, as the small caps have recovered sharply um, on the back of improved economic prospects in South Africa. So to conclude some of the lessons that we could learn from, from this particular period where we've had two vastly contrasting periods, uh, for, 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 the, for the two 12-month periods. The first is, I think, if we could just remember that during these times of crisis, um, and this was a particularly difficult crisis because it wasn't a financial crisis, it was a health crisis, and um, governments were behaving like they've never behaved before in terms of shutting economies down, is don't panic. Um, if you didn't panic last year, your portfolio has recovered very, very nicely. Generally speaking, by the time one realizes that this COVID is going to become a big problem for markets, um, it's within weeks the market has sold off so aggressively that it's not worth panicking by the time one um, t t uh, starts to want to take precautionary action. So don't panic during these environments. The second lesson I think out of it is look for opportunity. So we did look for opportunity. We were able to add to offshore equity exposure. Uh, we were able to add to our bond exposure. We were able to add to our property exposure. We didn't add to local equity exposure, which was a mistake with the benefit of hindsight, but I think I've dwelt on that during the presentation. 
And the third and final thing I'd say to you is don't switch. Don't be in a hurry to switch from one fund to another because with the benefit of the last 12 months, uh, this fund has done significantly better than the other. Understand why there is a relative difference in performance. If you can have a look at the top 10 holdings, go through those with your trust officer, go through the asset allocation, understand why it's done badly or it's done very well before you make any significant switches. And uh, my advice is always to, 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 to understand what's in the portfolio. And if there's a specific reason like you know, perhaps the fund manager that was running the fund is left or there's a there's a good reason, by all means, go ahead and switch. But don't switch based on the last year or the last two years relative performance because, before understanding why that relative performance has taken place. And then because we're not able to show performances of all the funds against PT because of the uh, particular the FSCA rules, uh, they don't like the those adverts um, that we used to see about um, the car that beats the bins. Um, so uh, next time you meet with your trust officer, if you're interested, ask them about the 10 year performance of the various funds that we've discussed during this uh, presentation. And you'll find that there's a remarkable consistency once you take a longer term into account between all of these, between all of these, these funds. So I'd like to conclude by thanking you all for the support, thanking you for being involved in the funds, hoping that you are enjoying um, the better environment that we're in at the moment. And I'm hoping that we will um, be able to uh, chat again in a year's time and um, continue with the happy or the many happy returns that we've been receiving in the last 12 months. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye for now.